Welcome to Dialogue with Deidre. I'm your host, Deidre Malone. Today, we're going to have a great show. I have attorney Yolanda Hardaway in the studio. She's the president of the Shelby County Democratic Women, and she's going to talk about an event that the organization has coming up. But while I have attorney Hardaway in the studio, we're going to talk about some of the Supreme Court's decisions uh, as of late. One, as recently as this morning, um, dealing with the Texas abortion laws and then last week the affirmative action laws so we're going to talk a little bit ba about that in the first half hour of dialogue with Deidre in the second half hour I have Donald Grayer who is the founder of Beta, Beta Le uh, Leadership Series he's going to be in the studio he has an event coming up this Thursday and he is honoring Dr. James Netter and he's going to be talking about secession planning if you own a business or if you um, have been in businesses for a while, that is something that you need to really start thinking about as well. So those are the topics for today's Dialogue with Deidre. We hope you stay tuned. If you want to ask either one of my guests a question, please go to the Dialogue with Deidre Facebook page and post that question. If we don't ask them during this broadcast, we'll make sure that we ask them later and we'll post their responses. So stay tuned. You're watching Dialogue with Deidre. Brown Apothecary is your community drugstore. Their licensed professional pharmacists provide excellent service while filling your wellness needs. They have $4 generic plans and they accept all major insurance providers. And they even offer free delivery for senior citizens. At Taylor Brown, they pride themselves on the personal care and attention they give every customer. Ask about their uninsured discount pharmacy program. The Taylor Brown Apothecary is your community drugstore. They're located 3333 Shelby Drive. Give them a call today at 901-794-3690 or visit them online, taylorbrowngroup.com. The Taylor Brown Apothecary is your community drugstore. The Carter Malone Group is a full-service public relations agency. Celebrating 10 years of being in business, the Carter Malone Group is located in Midtown Memphis and represents clients across the country. No matter what size your business, if you are interested in promoting your product or service and increasing your market share, contact the firm that can help you meet your goals. The Carter Malone Group. Call 901-278-0881 today.
Dialogue with Deidre. I'm your host, Deidre Malone. Attorney Yolanda Hardaway is in the studio, president of the Shelby County Democratic Women. Welcome to Dialogue with Deidre. And thank you for having me. We're so glad you're here today for a number of reasons. <laughs> we know initially, um, and we still are going to talk about the Shelby County Democratic Women's um, Salad Fest, and it's more than just a salad fest, and we want to talk about that, but some incredible... Um, rulings have come yes. down as of late from the Supreme Court and to today the Supreme Court voted I believe five to three, three mm -hmm. um, to shut down the Texas laws a couple of new laws dealing with abortion what are your thoughts on that attorney Hardaway um, well at first I was elated <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't had an opportunity to read through right. the entire exactly. um, decision but I'm sure that uh, this sends a good message to not only the Fifth Circuit, where Texas is located, but to a number of other circuits where there's been an ongoing attack against women's right to abortion under the Roe v. Wade Supreme Court case, that you have to have that right enforced, not just on paper, but women have to be given those protections to make sure they have that right in practice. It so was, this is a victory. It was something that Justice Breyer said that just really kind of stands out to me. Justin Stephen Breyer wrote that the majority opinion there was no significant health-related problem that the new law helped to cure. We agree with the district court that the surgical center requirement, like the admitting privileges requirement, provides few, if any, health benefits for women poses a substantial obstacle to women seeking abortions and constitutes an undue burden on their constitutional right to do so. So, you know, I'm glad to see that the majority of the justices felt like it was an undue burden, That's major right. obstacle. That's right. Um, in particular, the um, Fifth Circuit uh, had ruled that the states could place the requirement on abortion clinics that their services have to meet the same building standards as ambulatory surgical centers and it required the doctors performing the abortions to have admitting privileges at nearby hospitals. And I liken the procedure which has been described in the paperwork that went to the Supreme Court as a 10 minute in office type procedure to that of a root canal. Okay. Some people go in and have uh, liposuction and both those things take more time right. and more anesthesia than the normal uh, abortion procedures and certainly those requirements have not been placed on either of those two um, doctors that those two uh, types of procedures that those doctors have um, admitting privileges at nearby hospitals or that their buildings have to meet these unrealistic code requirements. Well, it's it's going to be interesting to see what some of these other states do now if they have to try and roll back laws that they've created. Um, so glad to see that yes. Texas took the lead, specifically um, the woman who filed the lawsuit, the owner of the whole women's health abortion clinic filed the lawsuit. So a victory for Texas and a victory for women. Yes. Um, yes. Across the country. Yes. And then I guess back in 2013, Abigail Abigail Fisher sued the University of Texas, claiming that she was denied admission um, because she was white. And so the Supreme Court ruled on on that lawsuit last week, right, Attorney Hardaway? Yes. And, and what did they what did they roll? Well, once again, uh, <laughs> we finally have some good news exactly. out of the Supreme Court. Uh, they upheld the um, affirmative action program at the University of Texas in, in their system. Um, and they held them to some very strict standards as to what types of past ills their affirmative action program was intended to address. Okay. But they were able to meet even that stringent test. So um, hopefully this will be a signal to the other uh, lawsuits that are working their way through the courts and in, in, in other districts in the, in the country that affirmative action still has some uh, protections. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So even with the uh, 
federal uh, legislators not allowing the president to advance his nominee. The court's doing great work. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm excited about it. Now, the real reason you're on Dialogue <laughs> with Deidre is um, the upcoming event you have. Yes. Talk to us a little bit about that. And then I just want to ask you, are you excited about being the new president of the Shelby County Democratic Women? Well, I am very excited that we have Salad Fest coming up <laughs> on July 9th. Um, it's um, been going on for over 20, 25 years uh, as um, a way for the candidates who run in for state and local offices to have a forum where they can come and speak directly to the community. And we have an opportunity for there to be some questions and answers. And we're holding it this year, July 9th, which is the second Saturday uh, of July at the IBEW building, which is at 1870 Madison Avenue. Wonderful. And it's going to be bigger and better than ever this year. So we want to invite everybody in the community to come out because we, we think it's really important that each voter get their information as straight from the horse's mouth and unfiltered as they possibly can. And this is an opportunity for that to happen. And so to our viewers, if they want additional information about the Salad Fest, is there a number or is there an email address that they can reach out to someone to yes. get that additional information? Yes. Um, we have the information posted at the Democratic Women of Shelby County uh, website. It's also on the Democratic Women of Shelby County Facebook, and they can also contact one of the two coordinators. And those email addresses, the first one is vbanks8 at yahoo.com, and the second is mbwilliams at earthlink.net. And if they can't get their information that way, they can certainly email me at hardawayy at bellsouth.net okay. because and we want them to come. And we want to make sure that they find out more information about it, and we'll make sure that we post it. I'll get Brittany to post it on the Dialogue Wonderful. with Deidre Facebook page. Wonderful. So our viewers will have access to that information. And I appreciate the fact that a lot of people will stay at home, as you know, Attorney Hardaway, and, and gripe about not hearing from their elected officials or not having access to them. And here is a forum yes. where they can come out and ask questions, as Correct. you said, directly. Directly. And and not get it unfiltered and, and get the, the media's view or... A little 30-second soundbite. Yes. yes. Uh, endorsements are good, but um, you should make your own endorsements in the final analysis after you've heard from the candidates yourself. Talk to me about what the Shelby County Democratic women have been doing as of late. This is a great event, and I know that um, this organization, which I'm a member of, yes. um, is very active in the community. Uh, well, and I, I've got to start off with what I'm very excited about, and it's something that I know that you had a lot to do with, and that is that the Tennessee Federation of Democratic Women will have their name engraved on the monument oh, yes. uh, that will honor those women who have marched and protested to get women the right to vote. Uh, and just for your viewers, Tennessee was the state that reconvened its legislature in order to ratify the amendment that gave women the right to vote. So I know that you were very uh, helpful and, and, and um, in at the very beginning yes. uh, in order to get the monument built in the first place. It's, it, yes. it's so exciting and I'm so glad that the Shelby County Democratic Women will, their names will, the name of the organization will be etched on the monument. Yes. Um, one of the organizations that I'm a member of, the Tennessee Women's Political Caucus, um, I just was rolled off as president of that organization, was the organization that provided seed money for yes. the monument. And so we're just so proud to, to look at even the, the women today that have served, um, you know, God rest her soul, Lois D. Lois Berry, DeBerry. Um, Speaker of the House now, Beth, yes. Beth ben Harwell. Harwell will be mentioned and Jane Eskin. Jane Eskin. Yes. Oh my goodness. So it's a tribute to women who yes. have been on the front line. Yes. Attorney Hardaway. Yes. And we're proud that Shelby County um, provided the uh, challenge money and Good. we took it to the, the delegation that met uh, in Nashville um, this spring and challenged the other clubs across the state to match 
and so that's how the Tennessee Federation that's will wonderful. end up engraved. Um, and I'm, I'm very proud that Shelby County's I delegation was are. able to start that. I believe so. the unveiling is going to be in August. August. So it's right around the corner, yes. viewers. So anyone who's interested, and in even I know that women across the state are putting money into the monument, but if you still want to contribute, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> Yvonne Wood, <laughs> Yvonne C. Wood will take your donations. So make sure that uh, if you want to uh, contribute that you definitely uh, get in on that because um, we stand on the backs of those women who marched in the streets and protested and until we got that amendment ratified. How long is it that we've had the right to vote? Oh my goodness. Not that I'm long. telling you, <laughs> I mean, so, and some of Latest us just, just take it for granted, and we shouldn't. And, and, and that's an important point to make, and that's something that the Democratic women of Shelby County is trying to address with Get Out the Vote, because not only the suffrage movement, but, you know, it took blacks even longer than that. That's right. Until, until the, the 60s, until 1960, uh, the 1960 Civil Rights Movement. Uh, to get the right to vote. And people don't realize that just wasn't that long ago. And um, I believe that if people can march and there are dogs that are attacking them, they're lynched, um, there were water cannons turned on some of the marchers just for the right to vote, that we certainly can take five minutes to go in and vote. And you know, we have early voting in in, in Memphis, Make runs for easy. two weeks. You don't have to go in your precinct if you go during early voting. And um, they're all air conditioned, no line, no waiting. <laughs> right. Uh, so there's really no excuse why everybody should not honor what women have fought for and what minorities have fought for. It's amazing. Right. It's amazing to me that some people will sit back and say, you know, my vote doesn't count, it doesn't mean anything. And what I try and tell people is that you're so proud when you go out and you vote for your president. Good feeling when you come oh out of the Oh my booth. goodness, you, go, you yes. go vote for President Obama and yes. you feel good about it, and, but you don't even think about your local races. That's right. And those races, we want you to continue to vote at the, at the, you know, at the federal level, at the national level. But your local races have such an impact on your life. On your everyday life. Everyday yes. life that those that race is the one you really need to be studying your right. candidates. And when you think about the sit-in that oh my uh, was held in the House of Representatives last week. Very moving. If you don't go out and vote and send those kinds of representatives uh, from your state, then you're not going to have that kind of representation in, Nash in, in in Washington. And I think we were all proud. Very, um, very proud. Steve Cohen was there. But sitting there proud. <laughs> sitting there with his legs right. crossed. <laughs> so you have to vote in every election. You can't just, just vote for the president. Just can't. That's and we right. have such a critical election coming up at the state level because you know, uh, we don't want to really be partisan, but we can just say that uh, the majority of the, the legislature at the state level is is Republican. And so for, for those who have Democratic leanings like us yes, <laughs> to yes. go up there and advocate for issues that are important um, to most Democrats often fall on a deaf ear. That's correct. And so pay attention to your local elections. And I know the Shelby County Democratic Women with the uh, upcoming Salad Fest um, is going yes. to be. <laughs> and our Get Out the Vote. We're Get doing, Out the Vote We're effort. doing an aggressive uh, push this year. We're going to have robocalls um, that we're funding going out, reminding people during uh, early voting. That's good. As well as we're in the process of setting up a mechanism to even give uh, senior citizens and persons who cannot get to the polls a ride to the polls. That's wonderful. Um, because we know how important it is. That is so good. Yes. Well, Attorney Hardaway and President of the Shelby County Democratic Women, you are welcome to come back at any time Thank to you. dialogue with Deidre. Is there anything you'd like to, parting words you'd like to leave with our audience? Vote and vote smart. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Attorney Hardaway, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank and you, um, we know that the Salad Fest is going to be a success. Again, viewers, make sure July 9th from 4 to 6 at the IBEW, 1870 Madison yes. Avenue. 
and go to the Shelby County Democratic Women's Facebook page and find out more information and we're going to post it on the Dialogue with Deidre Facebook page but I will be there so I hope to see you there and w make sure you come with some good questions <laughs> <laughs> for these candidates, right, right, Attorney Hardaway? We have to hold them accountable. We have to hold yes. them accountable. Yes. And so we'll be there in full force, and we hope to see you there, too. You're watching Dialogue with Deidre. We'll be back in a moment. Um, uh, Donald Grayer will be our guest in the second half hour of the show, talking about the beta lecture series, leadership series he has coming up this Thursday. Um, stay tuned. Taylor Brown Apothecary is your community drugstore. Their licensed professional pharmacists provide excellent service while filling your wellness needs. They have $4 generic plans and they accept all major insurance providers. And they even offer free delivery for senior citizens. At Taylor Brown, they pride themselves on the personal care and attention they give every customer. Ask about their uninsured discount pharmacy program. The Taylor Brown Apothecary is your community drugstore. They're located 3333 Shelby Drive. Give them a call today at 901-794-3690 or visit them online, taylorbrowngroup.com. The Taylor Brown Apothecary is your community drugstore. Did you know that every 34 seconds someone has a heart attack? Every 40 seconds someone has a stroke. But it doesn't have to be that way. Every day there's hope. Join me and the American Heart Association and get serious about your heart and your health. If you're doing nothing, do something. If you're doing something, do more. Find healthy living solutions from the American Heart Association's My Heart, My Life. It's that simple. And now let's take some questions from the public. Mr. Chairman, why do we keep cutting back on education? Governor, you want to take that question? Oh, Mr. Chairman, let's give this one to the Senate Majority Leader. Since this matter was taken up in AB 3712, I think it best if I defer to the Assembly Majority Leader. Actually, pursuant to Department of Education statutes, the State Secretary of Education would be more qualified to answer. Mr. Secretary. <clears throat> My legal team has advised me not to comment at this time, so I'll humbly refer to our state superintendent of schools. <laughs> uh, pass. Definitely pass. Okay, uh, county superintendent. Well, young lady, it's just too complicated. Can you tell me who's responsible for my education? <laughs> that is a good question. Governor? Repeat the question, please. I don't see why I can't get an answer from You're my... asking a lot of difficult questions. Oh, she sure is. Who are you? Well, I'm the governor! What is this? Your two minutes are up! <laughs> Stop the circus. Contact your legislators at thisbudgetblows.com. Mom, here's the mail. Thanks, sweetie. Mom, can I grab $20 from you today? Yeah, sure, that's okay. Cool, thanks. So they say it's a man's world? I don't see anybody's name on it. While they were doing their thing, we slowly changed all Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at.
The first, the first time I, I fell in, it was easy money. I used um, what I had to for, for school books. And after whatever was left, you know, I didn't realize it, it wasn't going to last long. So, uh, you know, at 18 years old, you're out there, okay, free money, shopping, purses, new shoes. Uh, I mean, well, I didn't think about the consequences later. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau estimates that we have about $1.2 trillion in student loan debt in America. There are plenty of people who take out loans. You know, it's very, very common. So I, it didn't bother me that I had to do it. So we would go around and we would give presentations. I did a previous documentary, State of the Black College Student, where we talked about various issues. And one small feature of it was student loan debt. However, what we found is that everybody across demographics wanted to talk about student loan debt because it didn't matter if you were black or white, male or female, young or old, everybody was dealing with this student loan debt issue. So the student loan debt issue was ubiquitous. It was everywhere. Everybody wanted to talk about it. And so we decided we have to address this issue because it has become the issue of our time. I always said, if I didn't get a scholarship, I was going to see Uncle Sam. That's what I was going to do. Uh, my sister said, uh, why not get a loan? Don't worry about it. Just, you're going to get a job. You're going to be able to pay it back. That's how we thought. But no one really knows how it feels to pay something back at 17, 18, 19, 20 years old. Oh yes, it was free money. It was pretty much, you know, you can get a student loan and then you won't have to worry about working and you can get an apartment on campus if you take out a student loan. This is not free money. Okay, there's an American myth that allows us to feel like because it's easy money, it's free money. This is not free money. Like, Sally will find you. That's not like having an ex-wife or anything. Like, it's much worse. She is going to get 100. I run credits um, for apartment complexes because you have to meet credit wise. And I'm not lying to you about it. More than 80% of the people that I run have student loans. And most of them are in collections. It sounds great. A buck 20, a buck 87, $200, 250 a month on a $45,000 loan. That's really, if you look at how much is going towards interest, and that, I mean, you're not paying that until you're ready to retire. When you get a student loan, they can give you so many thousands of dollars a semester if you don't have somebody to tell you, take it easy, don't get all that. I've watched people get three and four thousand dollars. Everybody else is doing it. I'm telling you something that you have not heard before because we are in a crisis situation. You must make better decisions financially and you need information and this is the information that you need. The Carter Malone Group is a full-service public relations agency. Celebrating 10 years of being in business, the Carter Malone Group is located in Midtown Memphis and represents clients across the country. No matter what size your business, if you are interested in promoting your product or service and increasing your market share, contact the firm that can help you meet your goals. The Carter Malone Group. Call 901-278-0881 today.
Malone. I hope you've enjoyed the show so far. I know that you're going to enjoy this segment as well. If you own a business, succession planning, how important is that? I know as a business owner, it's very important to me. I don't plan on doing this. <laughs> you know, past 60, okay? So I've been thinking about for a while my secession plan. So I have Mr. Donald Grayer in the studio today, and he is the founder of Beta Leadership Lecture Series. Mr. Grayer, Donald Grayer, welcome to Dialogue with Deidre. Thank you. Talk to me about the whole concept of Beta Leadership Series, the lecture series. Well, thank you. Um, the Beta Leadership Lecture Series is the platform where both clients and potential clients in the audience can have an opportunity to have intelligent conversation and gain valuable knowledge uh, regarding the most pressing issues and dynamics that are the driving force to, uh, to business, both short and long term. Uh, these uh, dynamics in which affect us all and they tend to be challenges in which we are not committed to. So the beta lecture series and the leadership lecture series is designed to bring a focus and an engagement where we're all committed to the challenges and the dynamics that impact us all. So a challenge could be a succession plan. I mean, a lot of people may not think about it, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. There, there are variable uh, challenges. Uh, they can range from, you know, life events, you know, whether it's someone wanting to retire or uh, replacement as far as a key person. And, and that's probably one of the biggest dynamics to it, are the, the lifestyle changes and uh, having key people in place to make certain that you are preparing uh, them to be engaged relative to both short and long term. Uh, the, the one thing I try and have uh, small business owners to recognize, the challenges are just not unique to small business. Uh, this challenge is, is there for everyone, whether you're a major corporation or small business. However, my commitment is to the small business uh, community mm -hmm. because they tend to not always be aware in the sense of uh, that there is someone who's able to help them with it uh, regarding short and long term. And I think most people, well some people, I'm not going to say most, some people get into starting a business and not thinking through all aspects of it. And so, I mean, it's a lot to do as a small business owner. I can tell you I went into it thinking, okay, this should be a breeze because I know how to perform these services, right? Um, but then all of the back office type of stuff wasn't really accustomed to. Had to get used to being or hiring an attorney when I needed one, figuring out the accounting piece, hiring an accountant when I needed one, um, but making sure that all of those, um, I guess, items were in place as a business owner. And some people don't even think about that. So the nexus for the series that's going to happen this week this thursday night yes talk to us a little bit about that well regarding uh thursday and uh, june 30 4 p.m at christian brothers university uh, this is an annual event uh, fortunately this is year two so i, I feel like it's a, a new baby per se mm -hmm. however what's taking shape here is both uh, local, regional, and national. And, and how this dynamic comes together is that the leader that's identified to receive the Economic Impact Award, and this year is uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Netters, who's the senior pastor at Mount Vernon Baptist Church, Westwood Incorporated. Uh, Dr. Netters has done a fabulous job of training up leaders. And I, and I understand a lot of people think this may be in the arena of religion. However, that's not the focus here. This is in the arena of having a fundamental and a foundational uh, in place uh, regarding what we all do. And one thing unique and, and that's really great about business is that 
the great things are transferable. Right. So as we have learned throughout life, it was good enough for mom and dad. Well, chances are it's good enough for me. Right. <laughs> so uh, Dr. Netters has, in, in an awesome way, trained up numerous leaders, whether it's in the religious community or uh, public service or even in the private sector that he's been engaged with and it's so unbelievable his tenure is 60 years or longer oh my goodness and ongoing so this is just uh, a perfect example uh, to bring a leader front and center right. relative to the dynamic that we're focused on this year which is the successful succession planning right. so this is really an awesome occasion and, and when Beta nominates the leader who we're putting front and center uh, for the audience, they're the best at what they do. So it's not happenstance, they're the best at what they do. And generally we've looked on a, on a national scale to see and identify as to the nominee. So uh, Dr. Netters is that leader this year and I think the audience and everyone involved in this will mm -hmm. have so many takeaways right. uh, once he's presented and once the program has been completed there'll be so many takeaways however we also acknowledge that no one can receive all of the information in an hour and a half or two mm -hmm. so we ask the, the clients and potential cl uh, clients to have an engagement going forward in the sense of getting their needs taken care of so that's the dynamic to the uh, lecture series. And so much research has gone into this process. I try not to talk about my career, but my career actually spans 40 years in the corporate community. And with that time, I've been able to do research and, and do different fact finding about what it would take to turn our community and our region in the right direction. And, and what I've gathered during this time period is that the fundamentals and the principal values, number one of ethics, education, uh, economics, and excellence, uh, that's the nominating criteria for the, the Economic Impact Award. And so when, when a leader tends to possess those values and commitments, generally they're really committed and, and that's where I come in as an entrepreneur is being committed to the cause to have betterment and oftentimes I think of uh, commonwealth right. you know our country uh, was built on the value of commonwealth and, and generally that just means that we all have a lot in common so the the wealth of each of us is relevant and Beta is committed to make certain we are all able to participate in the commonwealth of this country. Well, this sounds like it's going to be an exceptional leadership series, and Dr. Netters is such a wonderful, wonderful leader, as you mentioned. I mean, although he is the senior pastor of his church, this is not about the religious piece of it. It is about, you know, let's just be honest, churches are businesses. Too. Absolutely. It's just a house of worship. But in order to make sure that the house of worship is sustainable, <laughs> you have to be able to manage it like a business. Let's put that in one bucket. Mm -hmm. Then the other bucket is, like you mentioned, public service. I mean, I just remember, and I've read up on Dr. Netter so much, he's been over the years in the forefront of many, many important issues that have had a positive effect on the city of Memphis. Um, former city council member, he and, and Mr. Fred Davis were the two African American, probably the first two. Yeah, also J.O. Patterson. J.O. Patterson. Uh, junior. Was it Junior? Yes. Um, the three of them, forefront of making sure that there were some important changes during mm -hmm. the Civil Rights Movement when Dr. King was here marching. And so, I mean, he's just a part of the fabric 
of this city and this county and this state. And so it is so appropriate that um, that the Beta Leadership Lecture Series honors him. So I'm excited. I'm the mistress of ceremony and excited about it um, to be able to be a part of the program. And if there is anybody out in our viewing audience that might be interested in attending, what do they need to do? Well, the primary uh, inclusion is to be registered for the lecture series. Although we had a, a deadline for the 24th of this month, I still would like to open that opportunity to the listening audience to get registered. Okay. And primarily, if they would go to betagoal2020 at gmail.com, they can get registered via an email and a confirmation that they'll receive back that they are registered. Okay. And if they need to call, they can call area code 901-674-6221, and that rings directly to me. So I'll be able to take their call and return their call. And what we'll do is we'll make sure that we post information about the lecture series on the Dialogue with Deidre Facebook page. So if anybody is interested, you can just go to that page and also find information on how to register for the event this Thursday night. Now, you don't have a whole lot of time because it is this Thursday. Yes. <laughs> and I know, you know, Mr. Grayer wants to make sure that, you know, he is knows how many people are going to be at the lecture because it's, it's limited seating. So um, he only has a few seats left. So if you're interested, you need to go ahead and move forward with, with the registering for the event. So Mr. Grayer, thank you so much for being on Dialogue with Deidre. You are welcome to come back at any time. Want to come? have you come back and talk about building African-American wealth? Well, thank okay? you. Okay, so we want you to come back at any time. And I'd like to thank you, uh, Ms. Malone. You have conducted yourself so beautifully all these years and and I want to thank you for that thank you so much and look forward to Thursday night at Christian Brothers University the beta leadership lecture series um, mr. Donald Grayer is the founder and we're gonna be honoring dr. James Netters you're gonna want to be there so make sure you go to the dialogue with Deidre Facebook page and find out how you can register um, we will be back in a moment. You're watching Dialogue with Deidre. The Taylor Brown Apothecary is your community drugstore. Their licensed professional pharmacists provide excellent service while filling your wellness needs. They have $4 generic plans, and they accept all major insurance providers. And they even offer free delivery for senior citizens. At Taylor Brown, they pride themselves on the personal care and attention they give every customer. Ask about their uninsured discount pharmacy program. The Taylor Brown Apothecary is your community drugstore. They're located 3333 Shelby Drive. Give them a call today at 901 794 3690 or visit them online taylorbrowngroup.com the taylor brown apothecary is your community drugstore did you know that every 34 seconds someone has a heart attack every 40 seconds someone has a stroke but it doesn't have to be that way every day there's hope Join me and the American Heart Association and get serious about your heart and your health. If you're doing nothing, do something. If you're doing something, do more. Find healthy living solutions from the American Heart Association's My Heart, My Life. It's that simple. And now let's take some questions from the public. Mr. Chairman, why do we keep cutting back on education? Governor, you want to take that question? Oh, Mr. Chairman, let's give this one to the Senate Majority Leader. Since this matter was taken up in AB 3712, I think it best if I defer to the Assembly Majority Leader. Actually, pursuant to Department of Education statutes, the State Secretary of Education would be more qualified to answer. Mr. Secretary. <clears throat> My legal team has advised me not to comment at this time, so I'll humbly refer to our state superintendent of schools. <laughs> uh, pass. Definitely pass. Okay, uh, county superintendent. Well, young lady, it's just too complicated. 
Can you tell me who's responsible for my education? <laughs> that is a good question. Governor? Repeat the question, please. I don't see why I can't get an answer from You're asking a lot of difficult questions. Oh, she sure is. Who are you? Well, I'm the governor. What is this? Your two minutes are up. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the circus. Contact your legislators at thisbudgetblows.com. Mom, here's the mail. Thanks, sweetie. Mom. Mom. Can I grab $20 from you today? Yeah, sure, that's okay. Cool, thanks. So they say it's a man's world? I don't see anybody's name on it. Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. The Carter Malone Group is a full-service public relations agency. Celebrating 10 years of being in business, the Carter Malone Group is located in Midtown Memphis and represents clients across the country. No matter what size your business, if you are interested in promoting your product or service and increasing your market share, contact the firm that can help you meet your goals. The Carter Malone Group. Call 901-278-0881 today. Deidre Malone. A couple of things I want to close out on the last few minutes of the show discussing with you. I have a statement from the president of the National Women's Political Caucus, Donna Lent, and the statement is surrounding the Supreme Court ruling on Texas abortion laws. Here's her statement. 
As the president of an organization founded on the premise of supporting pro-choice women for office, I am pleased with the Supreme Court's 5-3 to three decision to strike down the Texas abortion access laws. The Texas law would have shuttered all but a handful of clinics in the state, putting tremendous burdens on both women and providers. The decision also highlights the important role of the Supreme Court in protecting women and their families and why the makeup of the Supreme Court will be one of the defining reasons um, driving voters to the polls in 2016 for the presidential election. Justice Stephen Breyer wrote the majority opinion, there was no significant health-related problem that the new law helped to cure. We agree with the district court that the surgical center requirement, like uh, the admitting privileges requirement, provides few of any health benefits for women, poses a substantial obstacle to women in seeking abortions, and constitutes an undue burden on their constitutional right to do so. So this decision is a victory for all women, not just women in Texas, but all women across this country. At the National Women's Political Caucus, we will continue to be vigilant and monitor how other states handle this issue moving forward. That is from the president of the National Women's Political Caucus, Donna Lent. Look, as we close out this show, two things I want to mention. The BET Awards last night, I had a chance to only see a small portion of it, um, and I'm going to go home tonight because we DVR'd it to watch it in full. But I know in, on Black Thought, um, Dr. Hutchinson had an opportunity to talk about Jesse Williams and, and his comments as he received an award. I wanted to see Samuel L. Jackson receive his award, but I went to sleep. So, you know, I'm going to watch it today, but I know Sam Jackson. He's a good guy. He's, he's actually visited my home when he was in Memphis. And I have a picture of uh, Sam Jackson with Samuel Jackson with my sons when they were growing up. And so, I mean, he has just been in every film, uh, at least over 100, playing so many different characters. And so I was just proud to, to see that um, he won an award last night, BET award. And it's my understanding from my intern, Brittany, that Beyonce and Kendrick Lamar had a performance. So I look forward to seeing that. Um, but I did get a chance to watch the season finale of Games of Thrones. I don't know how many of my viewers watch Games of Thrones, but let me just say I'm a big fan. And uh, throughout the season finale which throughout every time it comes on my middle sister dawn and i are texting each other throughout the show so um i was just you know breathless <laughs> watching the show last night what a heck of a season finale um if you've not watched the show i don't want to be a spoiler but let me just say this a lot of people were taken care of last night and you know what i mean when i say taken care of so I want to thank my viewers for watching Dialogue with Deidre. We'll be back here in the studio at the M1 TV Network on Wednesday. Um, at this point, we don't have a guest for the show. We're working on it. We're working on it. Um, but if you have any thoughts about topics for our show, please let me know. Post it on the Dialogue with Deidre Facebook page or email me at Deidre at DeidreMalone.com. We are doing incredible work here at the M1 Network, doing some things to our studio. You're going to be seeing that, um, updating our website, and just excited about the future of our network. And so Eddie Jones is just a taskmaster, and he's got us all working really hard to take our network to the next level. And let me just say, we are definitely committed to it and excited about it because what we know is that alternative programming is important. People want to hear African-American perspectives. And let me just say, we have it right here at the M1 Network. So keep looking at, keep looking at us, we wanna, but we want to hear from you. So keep letting us know what you think 
and we want you to know how much we appreciate you. If you are interested in advertising on our network, give me a call, 901-278-0881, or email me again at deidra at deidramalone.com. You want to be, if you own a business, you want to be on this network. Um, and we appreciate you. So continue watching us. Let us know what you think about our programming. And we will see you right here in our M1 TV Network studio on this Wednesday. Please enjoy the rest of your day.